Hello, Junk Wax Investor community. Hope you're all having a great day. And I hope you're ready for some Junk Wax era baseball cards. We'll be looking at the 10 most expensive that sold on eBay in the last week. Got a pretty awesome top 10 here for you. Got a nice set of bonus listings at the end as well. Make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end. You don't want to miss them. Criteria for the list is up on the screen. We won't waste any more time and we'll get right into the good stuff. All right, starting us off in the 12th spot from 1994 Upper Deck, we have an Alex Rodriguez Next Generation Electric Diamond Parallel Rookie Card, graded a gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $725.50. One of these sold in May of 2021 for $450, so it's up quite a bit since then. It's a pop of only 21 in a gem in slab. So the next generation inserts were inserted into series two retail packs at a rate of one in 20 packs. However, this electric diamond parallel is a hobby only exclusive and it was only available by redemption. So in the hobby boxes, there was case hits, which were next generation and next generation electric diamond trade cards where you got the complete set. So those like this card are not pack pulled. However, the normal version you can pack pull out of retail packs. So those 1994 Upper Deck Series 2 boxes. If you're chasing the retail one, sell for around 35 to 60 bucks. And the number 11 spot from 1989 score traded. Score rookie and traded. We have the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. Graded a pristine SGC 100. Or this would be a pristine 10 gold label. And it was a fixed price sale for $750. This is a pop one as a pristine slab. And for comparison, PSA 10s have a pop of almost 4,700 and sell for around a hundred bucks. So I would say this here was a pretty good pickup for a pristine copy. Probably not a whole lot of these out there. Obviously pop one in the SGC. However, the only other graders that have pristine slabs are Beckett and CSG, I believe. So the 89 score rookie and traded is a box set of 110 cards. Try to find one sealed. Those boxes sell for around 15 to 25 bucks. And I've added a link to the search results for those boxes for eBay in the description below. It's eBay affiliate links to all the boxes and sets in the top 10 plus ones from our previous videos. So if you're interested, check those out. 15 to 25 bucks. But pulling a copy that would grade a pristine and any of, from any of those graders is... Uh, Low, low chances, I would say. There's a reason when they come to market, they sell for a premium. In the number 10 spot from 1991 Tops Traded Tiffany, we have the Jeff Bagwell rookie card graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $855. This exact card actually sold in February of 2017 for $181. And one other copies of these in a gem and slab sold for $1,200 in August of 2021. So we're up since the last sale of this card, but we're down a bit from last year. Pop of this card in a gem and slab is only 167. And the 91 Tops traded Tiffany sets were actually some of the lower production run Tiffany sets. There were only about 4,000 believed to be produced. And those sets typically sell for around 280 to 400 bucks. In the number nine spot from 1985 Fleer, we have Roger Clemens rookie card graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $919.09. It's a pop of $172 in a gem in slab. One sold for $1,060 in July, but also this week, one sold for $770. So big swings of around 300 bucks for this one. But sales this year have typically been selling closer to the $900 to $1,000 mark. And boxes of 1985 Fleer sell for around 310 to 350 bucks. In the number eight spot from 1985 tops, we'll go back to back Clemens rookie cards. This one graded gem in PSA 10 as well and sold at auction for $1,099.99. This is a pop of 359 in the gem in slab compared to 172 for the Flare version. And boxes of 85 tops sell for around 325 to $600. And the number seven spot from 1986 tops, we have Nolan Ryan graded gem in PSA 10. 
This car sold at auction for $1,134.99. One sold at Heritage Auction in May for $780. However, there has also been other sales in the last six months or so around the $1,000 mark. So this one's not too crazy. It's a pop of 111 in a gem mint slab. These 86 tops cards are quite condition sensitive with a big thick black border at the top. Boxes of 86 tops sell for around 90 to 110 bucks. And the number six spot from 1991 score with a Mickey Mantle card number one, the rookie autograph number to 2500, graded a near mint mint PSA 8 with a 10 grade for the auto. This car is sold at auction for $1,184. It's a pop one in a near mint mint 8 slab, and there's none graded higher. This is the first sale on record and of this highest graded example. So there are seven cards in this insert set, and you can get autographed copies of each one, even though they're numbered to 2,500 on the back. Score said that Mantle only signed 2,500 in total. So of the seven cards, it's only 356 of each copy. They were inserted one in 30,000 packs in boxes of 1991 Score Series 2. Sell for around 15 to 25 bucks. Get ripping. 30,000 packs to go. In the number five spot from 1994 Upper Deck, we have the Ken Griffey Jr. Mickey Mantle autograph with the Griffey Auto. These were limited to 1,000, graded uh, or authenticated by PSA with a mint nine grade for the autograph. This car sold at auction for $1,255. This exact car sold for $1,475 earlier in July. So a little bit of a drop there. Actually, do you want it? was the same seller, so guessing the sale didn't go through. It's a pop of 31, and there are 26 graded higher with the numerical card grades for the card itself, with the highest being one mint nine. There are three variations, one with Griffey Auto here, like here, and one with just Mantle Auto, and then one with the Dual Auto, which is the most sought after version and sells for the most, and they're all limited to a thousand. However, it's been brought to my attention that dealers knew where these were seated in cases or boxes, so, Chances of uh, pulling one of these out of a pack nowadays are pretty slim, I would say. However, Series 1 boxes in 94 Upper Deck have a lot of awesome rare inserts as well, so they're not all for loss. And boxes in 94 Upper Deck sell for around 230 to 300 bucks. And the number 4 spot from 1993 Top Stadium Club Murphy Stadium Edition, we have the Derek Jeter Rookie Card Graded Gem in PSA 10. This car sold at auction for $1,649. Wow. This was an auction put on by Four Sharp Corners. This is the highest sale that there's been in a while. Um, highest on PSA's website since March of 2021 when cards got a little bit crazy. And kind of that January, February, March time frame. Uh, even this week, there's been ones that sold around $750 to 800 bucks. So this one stands out. I'm not sure why or how it went so high i don't know if it was a legit sale that would have got finished or if it was just bid up by a couple different bidders but really high 1650 bucks typically these sell for like i mentioned around eight or nine hundred bucks it's a pop of 938 and these 93 stadium club murphy sets sell for around 175 to 225 dollars all right, time to see what we have in the top three. First up, from 1992 Donruss, we have the Ken Griffey Jr. Elite Insert, numbered to 10,000, graded the gem in PSA 10, sold at auction for $1,725. This exact card sold for $315 in February of 2018. That was a good purchase by somebody. There's a pop of 44 in the gem in slab. A different copy sold in May, so a few months ago, for $1,795, so kind of sticking around that $1,700 to $1,800 mark. And as mentioned, these were numbered to 10,000 and the elite inserts were inserted into either series one or series two. And boxes of 92 Donruss sell for around 15 to 25 bucks. These ones are fun to chase and really cheap to get those boxes. And the number two spot from 1989 Upper Deck, we have Ken Griffey Jr.'s rookie card graded PSA 10. This car sold at auction for 2,051 bucks. This is the first auction sale in a while above 2,000 bucks, so that's good to see. Maybe we're put in a bottom and heading up again, I don't know. Pop of this card in a gem and slab is 4,040. Boxes of 89 Upper Deck Low Series sell for around 280 to $380. 
And top in the list this week in the number one spot from 1993 tops, we have the Derek Jeter Gold Parallel Rookie Card graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $2,904. It's a pop of 412 in a gem in slab. And boxes of 93 tops series one sell for 120 to 140 bucks. And the gold parallel inserts are insert one per pack. All right, that's it for the top 10 or top 12 this week. Time to take a look at our Junk Wax Investor Baseball Index. So for the week, baseball was down a little bit. We're at 87.7, down a little bit from last week. Uh, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Bitcoin all up this week. That's good to see. The index is made up of 63 cards. We're spanning 1985 to 1995. A lot of awesome cards in there, Hall of Famers and rookie cards. Summary for the week, we had 28 cards increase in pricing. 16 were no change and only 19 that had decreased sales prices over the week. Let's compare to our other three major sports. Football still in the lead, pretty much flat week over week. Baseball is sitting in second spot, down a little bit as mentioned. Hockey down a little bit as well, just in third, not too far behind baseball. And basketball had a pretty good week. Basketball is up off its lows. So we'll take a look at that on Sunday. So I put together these indexes and track all their values using the features of the Market Movers app. They have a pretty awesome collections feature that makes it pretty easy to build these kind of custom collections. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. Use the code JWI and the first month of your subscription is free. They're adding a lot of different features here all the time, adding new cards, new non-sports cards, adding sealed wax as well, track and value of sealed wax, so it's pretty neat. They've just added a new tier in the pricing, so there's a starter tier for $9.99. I find a lot of use out of it, so check it out. All right, time to get in some bonus cards. All right, up first, this is something unique. 1992 score. We have the Joe DiMaggio autograph. However, this is autographed. Uh, this is card number two, autographed JD12. Um, random grading company. Don't know the graded, grading company here. Just graded Gem Mint 9.7 for whatever that's worth. It was an auction, sold at auction for 500 bucks. However, it comes with a certificate of authenticity. So it's labeled JD12 out of 2,500. However, this wasn't one of the pack pulled ones. It says the card comes with a certificate of authenticity, verifying that it is an authentic autograph and came from Joe DiMaggio's estate. Apparently, there was a few of these in his estate autographed, and they were all autographed with a JD and then a number. I don't know if this is confirmed or correct. Um, certificate of authenticity, I mean, those can be forged and stuff too. I don't know. Have you guys heard of these or seen any of these? Is the story legit? I'd be a little bit wary of this. It seems like like I couldn't really find any information on these. So this one's a big mystery to me. But if it's true, obviously pretty interesting. Um, but I don't know if that's the case. So if you guys out there watching this know anything about this, please let us know in the comments below. It would be good to learn if these are real or not. From 1993 Hawaii Winter League, we have an Ichiro Suzuki rookie card graded a gem in BGS 9.5. This card sold at auction for $1,613. It's a pop of only 28 in a gem in BGS slab with none graded higher. Subgrades were 10 for edges, 9.5 for centering corners and surface. The PSA 10 pop is only 7 with no sales on record. A mint PSA 9 sold for $532 in June of 2019, so pretty rare card and high grade. From 1995 score select, we have the last card in the set, card number 250. This is a checklist with Ken Griffey Jr., Mike Piazza, Frank Thomas, and Jeff Bagwell on the front, and it's the Artist Proof Parallel. Graded gem in BGS 9.5, and it was a fixed price sale for $450. What an awesome card. You got four of the 90s Hall of Famers on here. This is pretty awesome. It's a pop at two in a gem mint slab with none graded higher. Subgrades were 9.5 for centering corners and edges and a nine for surface. That's probably one of the coolest checklists from the 90s, I would say. Uh, PSA 10 pop is only two as well, so super low pop. Um, limited, well, these were inserted one in 24 packs. These are artist proof parallels and estimated production of only 475 per card, so super rare. 
Up next, we got a two card lot of Nolan Ryan. We got a 1984 Topps graded the gem in PSA 10 and a 1993 Topps Finest Refractor graded in Mint 9. And it was a fixed price sale for $1,595. That's an amazing deal just for the refractor alone. Like, um, it was tough to really see if these cars were legit because the seller crossed out the certification number, so I couldn't look them up just to double check. But the 84 tops is a pop of 352, typically sells for around 350 bucks or so. But the 93 refractors, those were pretty rare. It's estimated production of less than 250 each of those. So a Mint 9, it's a pop of only 44, and there's only 8 higher graded 10s. The last sale of a Mint 9 was for 4440 bucks in May. A PSA 7 sold for $1,600 back in November. So if that's a legit actual 93 refractor, which I don't see why it wouldn't be, this was an amazing deal. I don't think anybody's out there making knockoff copies of 93 Nolan Ryan refractors, but you never know. From 1986 Fleer, we have the Major League Prospects with Eric Plunk and Jose Canseco. Rated a gem in PSA 10. This car sold at auction for $255. It's a pop at $229. And these were selling for around $350 in December, $300 in January. So they're coming down a fair bit. But $255 at auction. Up next, from the 1986 Card Collectors Company, this is the Mickey Mantle set. This is a reprint set, 51 Bowman, graded in mint PSA 9, sold at auction for $810. That's a huge sale for a reprint. That's an early reprint, 1986 reprint. It's a pop of 40 and a mint slab, and there's only one higher graded gem in 10. No recent sales for a while. Last sale was in April of 2017 for $4.25. From 1994 Upper Deck, we have a Ken Griffey Jr. base card graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $454. These are selling really strong for these base cards. It's a pop of 35 and a gem in slab, so low pop. One sold for $400 in February of 2022, so it's actually going up quite a bit. Up more than 10% since the beginning of the year. 1995 Signature Rookies Tetrad. This was a multi-sport set. We have a Roy Halliday autograph card, number to 5,000. This would be a pre-rookie card. In raw condition, sold at auction for $80. Uh, this would be probably one of his earliest cards until his 97 Bowman rookie card. It's only 25 of these graded with PSA, with the highest being 8 Mint 9s and 4 Gem Mint 10s. There's uh, actually a PSA Authentic sold for $250 back in October of 2020. So I think this one here was a pretty good pickup at 80 bucks. From 1995 score, we have a Ken Griffey Jr. Platinum Team set, limited or numbered to 4,950, graded a gem in PSA 10, not numbered, I think it's limited. And it was a fixed price sale for $1,075. There's a pop of only four in a gem mint slab. First sale on record for a 10. So the 95 score, there were Gold Rush parallel cards. And hobbyists who collected all the Gold Rush cards of a particular team in a particular series could then mail in those cards along with a Platinum Redemption card. And the Platinum Redemption cards were seated one in 36 packs, so box hits. So, and then you got back a complete Platinum Team set. And then you got all the Gold Rush cards back. Some were hole punched with the shape of a Pinnacle logo. Some weren't when they returned. So the Platinum Team set cards are similar to the Gold Rush cards, except they have sparkling Platinum foil fronts. And they come in a factory sealed bag. The top card in the bag is a certificate for the Team set. And only 4,950 of each of the Platinum sets were produced. But it's not known if all of them were redeemed, so there could be less than those out there. From 1996 Pinnacle Zenith, we have a Sammy Sosa Diamond Club with the Diamond Chip Parallel in raw condition. Sold at auction for $66.56. I think that's a pretty good buy considering these are quite rare parallels. So there was a limited number of Diamond Club cards that feature an actual diamond chip mounted on the card. 
So these were inserted one in 350 packs. So none of these copies of the Sammy Sosa with the diamond chip have been submitted to PSA for grading. So if you bought this and sent it in, it'd be a pop of one. Without the chip, like without the diamond chip, which is a little more common, only two of those have been graded. But I think this one here with the diamond chip for 66 bucks was a pretty good buy. All right, that's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite cars were. Also, if you have a quick second, please hit that like button. I truly appreciate the support. If you haven't checked out the affiliate links that we have in the description below, we have eBay partner network links for various search results specific to the video. If you want to do some browsing of some of these cards and sets, check out those links below. It's a pretty helpful reference. Also, we got a link to BCW Supplies, and you guys can save 10% with the code JUNKWAX10. And in addition, we have a link to the Market Movers app, and you can use the code JWI to get your first month subscription for just $1 to give it a try. As always, enjoy the rest of your day and keep collecting. Thank you.